our fifth virtual Mother Nature and Me. Welcome back. It's a windy day here at the garden. Feels nice. You guys. And you know, some of you might have seen our post yesterday. It was Earth Day yesterday. So, happy belated Earth Day. You know, here at the garden, we try to treat every day like it's Earth Day. Our beautiful planet Earth needs our help every single day of the year. So I brought with me a few things to show you what I do to try to help protect the planet every day. But I thought Earth Week would be the perfect time to talk about it. So this one is pretty simple. Everyone can do this, a reusable bottle. Instead of those plastic water bottles that we just use them once and throw them away, what happens when we throw something away? Do you guys know where it ends up? Do we even think about it ever again? It goes in the trash and it ends up in a landfill, which is just a big hole in the ground and it is not good for the earth. So a reusable bottle, that's very, very easy to do. Every time I go somewhere and if I'm gonna get a, a hot drink, I use this one. And if I'm gonna get a cold drink, I, I have another one that I use for cold drinks. That's a super easy way that everybody can help the planet. And how about these? Are you guys still taking shopping bags at the grocery store? I hope not. This is such an easy way to help protect the planet because those plastic shopping bags, they end up in the landfill too. And sometimes they end up in the ocean and they get wrapped around the turtles and the fish. It's no good. So. When you go to the grocery store, you just bring a reusable shopping bag and you tell the cashier, please bag up my groceries in this and they will happily do that for you. So, reusable shopping bags. And this is something I always keep in my purse. It's my bamboo fork and spoon and knife and chopsticks. <laughs> and this is, you know, if I happen to be eating on the go, instead of taking plastic fork and plastic spoon and plastic knife, I can just use something reusable. It's very important. Try to remember, single use, no good. Always try to use reusable things. And that is all I have with me today. <laughs> but. There's so many other things we can do to protect our planet. And um, actually the, the craft that we're going to do today is really fun. We're going to be making an earth healing potion. It's a very special craft close to my heart because when I was a little girl, I used to pretend I was a little witch and I made all types of potions. <laughs> so this is a special craft. We're going to be making an earth healing potion. So if you needed a chance, take a minute to gather some things from, uh, I guess, from outside. You're going to need some, you're going to need a jar or any type of clear container, uh, some sand or sugar or salt. Any of those will work. Uh, some berries, any type of little berries, um, some leaves or sticks from outside, some flowers or rose petals and uh, some water and some herbs. So you guys can take a minute to go gather those things. We'll make a special earth healing potion because sometimes the earth does feel like it's sick. Just like we can get sick, the planet earth can get sick too. So we all have to do our part to take care. So another thing that we can all do to help save the planet, which leads me into the story that we're going to be reading, is we can eat less meat and animal products. Um, I'm going to be reading one of my own stories today, which is Veggie Vero and the Case of the Missing Calves. This is my story that I wrote, and I know a lot of you are familiar with Veggie Vero and her message. She's a vegan superhero who rescues the animals and teaches children about compassion and how to choose plant-based alternatives instead of um, instead of animal products because when we eat animals and animal products 
It uses so very many resources from our planet. And also, it's not the kindest way. You know, animals have feelings and they have families and relationships just like us. So it's always a very easy switch to choose something plant-based instead of an animal product. Maybe for Earth Day or Earth Week, you can experiment with vegan dishes. There's lots of them, so easy to look up online. And feel free to reach out to me, any of, any of you. You know that I am vegan and I'm happy to share recipes with you all. So today we'll read a Veggie Ver Vero story in honor of Earth Day. And I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, Tara. Hi, Shelly and Christina. <laughs> I see some of you are all logged on. I hope you've had a chance to gather your supplies. I'm gonna go ahead and start the story now. And if Kai and Nala are watching, I have my Veggie Vero shirt on. I know you guys have a matching shirt, so. Team Veggie Squad. <laughs> all right, let's get started. Veggie Vero and the case of the missing calves. It was a very exciting time to live in the town of Kalesville. The word was spreading that a girl from this special town had the power to unleash compassion in the heart of mankind. Her name was Veggie Vera. One day, a very upset mama cow came to see Veggie Vero. Moo! Veggie Vero, I need your help. I've come all the way from Cowbell Kingdom because our baby cows are disappearing. I can't find my baby anywhere. This was horrible news. The calves must be hungry and frightened without their mamas. Vero suspected that the calves were disappearing because people wanted to drink the mama cow's milk. Have no fear, mama cow. We will teach the people of Cowbell Kingdom that a mother's milk is meant only for feeding her babies. Remember, all change begins with knowledge. hungry she can take a bite out of her out of her bicycle searching cow Veggie Barrow and Mama Cow went to visit the Kalesville milkman. They found him delivering fresh almond milk, coconut milk, and soy milk to the people of Kalesville. After hearing all about Cowbell Kingdom, the milkman agreed to join Veggie Barrow on her mission. When they reached Cowbell Kingdom, they found Cashew leading a scary a, a protest near a yeah, sorry, they found Cashew leading a protest near a scary looking building called the Milk Factory. Mama cows were demanding to have their babies returned safely. They felt angry and betrayed by the people of Cowbell Kingdom. Why do they want to drink our milk? The cows wondered. We only wish to feed our babies in peace. Their signs are backwards for you guys, but they say, My milk, not yours. 
free our babies. A crowd of people had gathered, and now it was time to teach. I'm Veggie Vero, protector of animals and superhero of Kalesville. The cows in this town are very sad. Their babies have been taken away so that humans can drink their milk. Cows are among the most emotional animals on earth. They form strong family bonds and show concern for their future. Mother cows become very upset and spend weeks searching for their missing babies. And that's true, you guys. When the baby cats are taken away from the mom, they get really sad and they're looking all over for them. It's confusing and they don't know why they gave birth to a beautiful baby and then it was taken away because the mama cow only produces milk when she has a baby, just like humans. Veggie Vero continued, the Kalesville milkman has brought his collection of milks that are made from nuts and plants. Taste how delicious it is when you choose kindness. The people could not get enough of this tasty new milk. Somebody brought cookies along and before long it was a milk and cookies party. The milk factory owners had been watching and listening. They realized that making plant milk would be so much easier. No longer would they have to breed cows or cause any suffering. The doors to the scary building opened up and all the calves ran out to their mamas. The milk factory was soon turned into the almond house. The cows in Cowbell Kingdom spent the rest of their days roaming in grassy fields, playing in the sunshine, and telling stories about the superhero from Kalesville named Veggie Vero. message from the author. You don't need to have magic powers to be a superhero. You only need a pure heart and the courage to stand up for what's right. Let's all follow in Veggie Vero's footsteps by spreading the vegan message to friends and family. Don't get discouraged if you're met with resistance. Keep planting seeds of compassion and lead by example. All change begins with knowledge. The end. I hope you like that. All of my books are available on VeggieVero.com. This is a series of four. four uh, there's four Veggie Vero stories, and I'm working on the fifth one now. So, in the end, all the baby calves were returned to their mamas, and that is my heart's hope for the future of our planet. There is no reason to drink a cow's milk. Absolutely not. We have so many plant-based alternatives. In my house, we drink almond milk and sometimes coconut milk. There's cashew milk and hemp milk, so many different types of milk. And of course, milk is also used to make cheese. So if you have not tried some of the vegan cheeses that are out there, they've improved greatly over the years. I highly recommend Follow Your Heart Vegan Cheese and um, uh, Vio Life, V-I-O, Vio Life so delicious literally tastes exactly like regular cheese so that's my two cents who's ready to make an earth healing potion i love this craft okay so get out your jar i just have a, a mason jar here hi danny <laughs> yes genie i'm sitting under the mulberry tree <laughs> watch out for purple 
mulberries splattering on me. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I have a secret recipe here for an earth healing potion. Are you friends ready to make this potion with me? We have a garbage truck in the background, so <laughs> I'll try to speak up. So the first thing you're gonna need is something sandy. It can be sand from outside, or it can be sugar, or it can be salt. But something sandy is gonna represent patience. Patience. Because for healing, we need patience. Healing doesn't always happen overnight. It takes time, right? It takes time. So I have some pink sea salt that I'm gonna use. And you're gonna pour it in. Let's make our potion together. And as we pour it in, we're thinking about all of the love that we have for our beautiful planet Earth and the patience that we're gonna keep in mind as we try to heal this beautiful planet. Patience. Okay, the next thing is berries. Do you have any little berries that you can add to your potion? I found some strawberry fruit berries, which if you've been to the garden, you've probably tasted these before. They're so delicious. They taste like cotton candy. And I believe the botanical name for them is Matinga, Matinga Kalambuda. I think if I'm saying that correctly, they're so tasty. But the berries will represent uh, friendship. The berries will represent friendship because berries are sweet and friends make our life sweet. All of our friendships make our life very sweet. So we're gonna add our sweetness to the potion add some sweetness and berries are kind of like little little gifts that the trees give us right just like friends give us gifts for our birthday and things like that berries are like little gifts from the trees so the berries will represent friendship okay so we have patience and we have friendship and next let's get some herbs so the herbs are going to represent health and wellness. Mm, this is my favorite, favorite herb. It's a pretty common one, but it's just oh, so delicious. This is rosemary. It smells so good. So I'm going to add some rosemary and a little bit of thyme. And we're going to add it into the potion because for healing, you definitely need some health and well being, right? So our herbs represent health and wellness. So important. And we're all at home right now taking care of our health. So let's keep in mind the health of our planet as well. So we have patience and we have friendship and we have health and wellness. Okay, next we're gonna grab some type of stone or rock or something hard. I, I have a rock here, and I also have some pebbles. So I'm gonna add both rock and pebbles into the jar. And the rock and the pebbles are something hard. It represents resilience. It represents, resilience means tough, not easily broken. So even though sometimes we can get sick, we always make it through, we get better, we push through, right? We have things that keep us alive, things that we love, and we say, nope, I'm gonna fight. That's what our rock represents. Our stones represent resilience, the will to survive. Okay, so patience and friendship and wellness and health and res resilience. This is a pretty special potion. Now, we're gonna take some little sticks from outside. You can also use leaves, something from a tree. If you have any little sticks 
pieces of bark from a tree. We're gonna add those to our potion. And the pieces of the tree are gonna represent our family, like our family tree. Because when we are trying to heal, almost nothing comes close to being with family, right? Family that loves us. So we're gonna add family tree to the potion. All right, it's looking good. It's looking magical. And next is some rose petals or flower petals. If you have any flowers, it can be flowers from outside, even those little Biden flowers that are like weeds, technically, but they're cute little flowers. You can grab some of those. I have some salvia. So pretty. I'm gonna just empty it out into my potion. Okay, and I also have some sweet almonds. And this smells so good. And I'm not sure what these are called, but they sure are pretty. So I'm just gonna put those right in. Please send me some photos of your potions too later. Can't wait to see. Okay. So the rose petals with the flower petals, those represent love because we get flowers usually from people who love us. And healing is really all about love. We need love to heal the earth. And when we're sick, Having some love around us really helps, right? So the flowers represent love. So that's all the ingredients. The only last thing that we're missing is water. We need some water now. The water is gonna tie it all together. It's going to represent the life force. Our earth, our planet earth is made mostly of water. So we have to tie it all in by adding water. So fill it up as much as you'd like. Look at that. And then you can experiment with it too. If you want it to look different, you can add more flowers. Like, I would like to add some more flowers to mine, actually. But this is our Earth Healing Potion. And another cool thing you can do is, with the help of an adult, if you'd like, you can take a candle and just float it right at the top. So then you have earth, and water, and fire. It can be a little floating candle. But that is our potion. Now we're going to seal it up. And enjoy it for the rest of Earth Week. And then dump it back out into the earth. What comes from the earth returns to the earth. This was fun. And it's so pretty too. I love the way it looks. And it's interesting to see what floats and what sinks. Pretty cool. Thank you for joining me. Veronica is the animal whisperer. <laughs> You're funny. Thank you for joining me, guys. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And remember, every day is Earth Day. Keep our planet in mind every day as you go along throughout life in this journey we're all trying our best to cause less harm trying our best to reduce our eco footprint when we leave this earth we have a footprint that we leave so the more we can do to make that footprint smaller and smaller with simple things like using a reusable water bottle 
taking a, a reusable shopping bag, um, saying no to straws, things like that, it all helps, it all makes a difference. No matter how small you might be, and it might sometimes feel like it's not making a difference because it's so small, it's like I'm just one person. But if everybody thought like that, then nobody would be making a difference. So every single person that does their part makes a difference. Happy Earth Day, guys. Happy Earth Week. And happy Thursday. See you next week. Bye.